welcome to your daily dose of inspirational and life-changing Bible studies designed to equip you to conquer your world. We encourage you to share this devotion with your family and friends, even start a watch party. We know that you will be blessed and edified. Today's daily devotion starts now. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning to all of you. Welcome to our devotion this morning. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will what? We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. All right. So God bless each and every one of you this morning. Thanks for joining in. Let's just have a word of prayer and then we're going to get straight into the word of God this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Oh God, I thank you that there are no battery power to your goodness and your mercies where, you know, sometime that we got to change out those batteries because your goodness and your mercies ran down. No, God, I thank you that your goodness and your mercies, they are new. They are new every morning. That means right now, full, top up, maximum uh, power, new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. Thank you that you still forgive sins. Cleanse us and wash us in all of our hearts and minds, our words, our actions, our deeds. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for our leaders. Thank you for our children, our spouse. We submit ourselves to you under the authority of your word. We thank you that your Holy Spirit allows us to understand the message. Everyone connecting with me this morning, I pray for a special touch. Those of us who may be feeling a little weary, sick in the body, if you're experiencing any type of pain, I pray in Jesus' name that there'll be a special touch upon their life. Bless those looking on live and those who will see this on the playback. Your Holy Spirit touched them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, God bless each and every one of you again. Seven enemies, that's right. The number seven there is very important. I want you guys to be able to, uh, to discover, right? Seven enemies. Let's do a quick review. Enemy number one is who? Enemy number one is who? That is what you should do every time you hear it. You learn it, you live it, and then you lead it. Excellent. Every time the preached word of God is ministered and served up unto you, you learn it, you live it, and you lead it. That's how we keep this thing going. All right, number one. I uh, Seven enemies you must face. And remember... The agenda of the enemy is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Never forget that. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Enemy number one is what? Let me see who I'm going to put in front of the class. <laughs> There's no. Enemy number one. I'm seeing number two. I'm seeing number two. I want number one. Number one, I shared with you, book of Job. The book of Job. He was walking to and fro. He's seeking who he may devour. The devil himself. The devil himself. Anybody who accepts Jesus Christ, the dragon, he goes out 
and he is against them. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee, resist the who? The devil and he will what? Flee, resist him. So you gotta, you gotta learn to resist the devil himself, all right? Somebody says I'm in the back of the class already. Y'all better be taking your notes. Number two, I saw it, fair, fair, right? Fair, the devil will manifest himself through the spirit. Fair is a spirit, for God has not given you a spirit of fair. Fair is a spirit, and you can be overcome by fear. I'm giving you a review here. All the armies of Israel, Goliath came to them. They all stood their ground and they hid in what? Fair. Until David showed up on the scene. God has not given you a spirit of what? Fair, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Right? So God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. Number three. One of the faces of the enemy. There's an enemy that you will face every time you get ready to grow and progress. Growth and progress attracts an enemy into your life. They are threatened by it. Genesis 26 and Isaac waxed richer he sowed in the land god gave him a hundredfold in the same year and they gnashed with their teeth there are people who there are people who will raise up themselves against you because of your growth and your progress Exodus chapter 1, the king was afraid of Israel's growth, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and waxed stronger. People are threatened by your growth, threatened by your progress. Not everybody's happy when you get a promotion. Not everybody's happy when you get the new home. When not everybody's happy when you get the new car. Not everybody's happy when you get the new baby. It's a reality. Don't say, hmm. Why would people look? Let me say this to you. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you all the reality check. My mother gave me this reality check when I was a young man. I remember being in bed. She's laying down there with me. I don't know, I'm probably six, seven years old. And she says, Luke, you need to take a rest in the afternoon. And we're talking, and she said, Luke, I want to tell you something. I said, what, mommy? She says, Luke, I don't care how nice you are to everyone. Not everyone will be nice to you, and that's okay. Not everyone will like you, and that's okay. She says, I know you want to be nice to everyone, I know you get confused if somebody is not nice to you. I know you don't understand why people will say certain things. I know you may not understand why people will do certain things. But I want you to know this, Luke. It's okay. Because I was growing up and I thought when you are nice to others, everybody will be nice to you. So I was confused when people would say very nasty things against my parents, against the church. It confused me. Why would people want to speak nasty against a good cause? Why, why would people not mean well to you when you mean well to them? Why, why would sometimes people uh, misconstrue your heart behind certain things and you know it's like their tongues are filled with poison if you look on social media all the time people are attacking your name attacking what you do attacking your success attacking your progress 
And at first, my emotions were, a tie, were tied to those attacks. Can I be real with you all this morning or do you want me to give you the sugar coat message with the cherry on top? Or are we gonna really get into the word this morning and talk the truth about the world that we live in today and how evil is ever present and the nature of man today, the culture, the society, it is very carnally driven and centered. We have to be real. And look, some of you get knocked upside the head because many of you don't think that you will face it in church and you have faced it in church and, and many people are no longer in church because they never expected to face any type of treatment like that through church. They almost think it is God himself and they're out there hurt and they're hurting people, talking about the church, talking about Christians, talking about pastors, talking about leaders. Why? They got hurt. They did not understand the work of the enemy. See, a lot of people don't know how to discern the enemy. <laughs> they don't know how to discern. Why? They don't have the word. They are immature. That is why it's not good to attend anywhere you call church that is not feeding you the unadulterated, infallible word of God. Because if you are a Christian and your roots are not deep and you just, you're just serving God like if it's a club, you're just in for the benefits and the blessings, not the responsibilities. It's almost like when you're a part of a club, just pay your monthly dues and then use the benefits of the club. You don't go there to clean up the grass. You don't go there to wipe up the toilet. You don't go, you have no responsibility. Just pay your monthly dues and just come for benefits. That's not Christianity. You are enrolled like a soldier in a mission. Apostle Paul says, I don't get entangled in the things of life. I am concerned about pleasing the one who put his hands on me, that I may lay hold of the things for which I was laid hold of. When you join and you become a believer, you join a kingdom of purpose driven by a king who, who who saved you for purpose, by purpose. You're not hanging around in Christianity for benefits. You are on a mission. And because you are in the kingdom of light, you must understand that there is a kingdom of darkness and they wage war against the kingdom of light and those who are in it. So you don't, it's, it's dangerous to be walking around here and you're not well taught in the word of God. I see many believers who are out there no longer in church anymore. Do you know why? They were shallow. They were just attending church for a little feel good, for a little worship, for a little cry in the middle of worship, a little, this is a little emotional experience. You just come for prayer. You know, life is not... You haven't gotten into real Christianity yet. The church doors are closed. Do you know how many people have gone wax cold in the faith? They wax cold. Because the doors of the church is closed. Roots shallow. Now it's time to play themselves. They have no commitment. Look, come on. Come on, folks. I was born in the 80s. I was raised by the forefathers. I was raised by real believers, right? You talk about Sister Angela Griffith, old schoolers. You talk about Sister Austin. For those of you who know who that is, you're talking about people who walked with God face to face in the morning. 
You're talking about Pastor Charles Alexis. You're talking about Sister Joyce Edwards. You're talking about Deborah Kwame and my mother. You're talking about uh, 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 people who walked with God, still walking with God, face to face, real commitment to God, real walking in the spirit, real walking in the word. No joke Christianity, commercial Christianity. You think they were waiting for, for a church door to open to have prayer? They'll have prayer on their house. I remember my mother every Thursday going by Sister Austin for prayer. They opened their homes. They opened their basement. They opened their living rooms. That's where they built the faith. House to house. Living room to living room. Church doors are closed for seven months. Folk, folk are drifting around like ghosts. Why? No roots, no real relationship with God. So the enemy rocks back and he laughs. Especially for places that did not teach people the solid word of God, how to walk with God. I'm more fired up now. I'm more committed now. I'm more on fire right now. It doesn't affect me like that. Why? Roots are deep. In him. We've been walking with God for a while. We didn't just come to this party. We know how to walk with him. We know how to talk with him. He tells us that we are his own. This is not child's play. This is not kindergarten Christianity. This is the real deal. Is the real deal. So the enemy laughs because he succeeds. In getting a lot of people to drift away from their commitment to the Lord right now. Because they don't discern how he works. Huh? Y'all didn't sign up for this type of devotion this morning. Oh, Pastor Lou, what? Why you got to talk like that? Huh? Y'all inside. Y'all inside for this type of devotion this morning. He said, well, Luke, Luke, just give us the swing on the chandelier, gentle, uh, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Just, just give me the M&Ms type of Skittles type of devotion with a lot of colors and very sweet. Give me the nice colorful one. This morning, you, you, you're putting down a Zebra Peak type of devotions. It don't taste good at all. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm seeing it. All kinds of stuff happening because the doors of the church are closed. And it's revealing. It's revealing that a lot of people were walking around with shallow roots. Shallow. The roots aren't deep. What do you think it is? Your salvation is on recess because the doors are closed? There's no recess to the walk. It's not primary school. 10 a.m. you get recess. 12 o'clock, an hour for lunch. 3 p.m. you get another break and then you leave. No, 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 no. You don't get to turn the switch off. You better tag somebody right now who needs to hear this message. Tag them right now. You don't need no permission. Tag, say, get, you need to get in on this this morning. You need to get in on this this morning. I didn't come to sugarcoat because I'll tell you this. I mean, let me show you. Let me, let me show you in the scripture. I want to show you this. I'll probably do it from my phone. I'm going to describe... How the Bible tells you all right? You have to understand and discern right now the times we are living in. The times. People don't understand the times. You're still talking about the pandemic. The Bible talked about times and seasons. Read the world through the lens of the scripture. 
Yes, I know we're in a pandemic, but you got to understand times and seasons. Times and seasons. That's what you got to pay attention to more. Now, watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also. So you got to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 because something was said before. He's saying, add also this to your curriculum. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. Let's find out what is the meaning of perilous. Some of you say dangerous, peligroso. Well, let me see if I see something there that I've never seen before. Full of danger or risk. Full of danger or risk. Perilous. Right? The Bible says that the times is going to be full of danger and risk. Risky. Meaning involving the chance of loss or injury. So those are the type of times that we're going to go through. All right? Perilous times. Now, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be what? Lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. Truce breakers. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Oh, y'all don't want to read the word. Just, look, it's very easy to live in this time. Go find it in the word and go live it in the world. Go find it in the word and go live it in the world. Learn it, live it, lead it. Like Brother Paul Nash said, learn it, live it, and lead it. Look, the Bible tells you how people are not surprised by people's behavior today, could the word already informed me. This is how men are going to behave in these type of times. Rude. They hate people who stand for good. Boasters, truce breakers, disobedient, fierce, despisers of those, traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasure. I know it. So when you have the word, your discernment is sharpened that you're going to run into this time, but the Bible tells us from such, turn away. Now, there's also a specific warning to women. Mm. Some of you say, well, let me hear this now. Oh, yes, there is a specific warning to women. Verse number six. Come on, somebody. This is the word of God. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Do you know I saw, a, I don't know where this was, but I want you to be careful. Do not let anybody manipulate you. 
under the umbrella of being servant of God. And, and in, in, in behind closed doors, it is for personal gain. There are many angles people can take. But do not let anybody take advantage of you under the context of church or ministry. And it's for personal gain. You know, a lot of people talk about tithe and offering. Do you know nobody, nobody turns and rings off your wrists for money? Anytime somebody forces you or tells you how much money you have to give, that is not good from the platform or from a minister. Nobody must tell you how much you're supposed to give. As a matter of fact, giving should come from the heart. If you are ministered to and you don't feel to give, then you don't give. Nobody must ever feel forced to give money. Nobody must ever be told to give money. If there's a time to give and in your heart you want to give, then you give. But don't let anybody manipulate you when it comes to that. Then also other types of favors. Don't be caught in that. Don't be caught in that. Don't let, look, I know personally. Mm. Lord, help me. Somebody cover me in prayer right now. I know personally. Sometimes prophecies are used to control people. Mm. My father, when he was training me as a young minister, he said, be careful of the prophetic word that inspires fear to control or to manipulate. It should edify. Be careful. Mm. Be careful. I see all kinds of things happening out there today. I see people receiving money for prophecies. Mm. Be careful. Do, do, do you want me to warn? Do you want me to say the truth? Or you, you just want to go out there and live, and the shepherds do not pay attention to the state of the flock. Do, do you want any, any two by four type of leadership? And let me say this publicly, and I'm open to correction. Nobody needs your money. <laughs> People believe, I ain't going to give nothing. Keep it. Giving should be by the heart. Never give under compulsion. Never give because somebody forces you to. But don't believe that when you give, you keep the lights on in the church. Some people feel that if if they know if they don't give, the church is gonna shut down. Folks, the church is the Lord's. It's his bride, and God will take care of his church. God will always find a remnant who is faithful to him. Don't ever think too highly of yourself. Don't ever think you, you're more important than you are. Everybody's worth. Everybody has value, but don't think too highly of yourself. I don't care how much you give. Do not think too highly of yourself. Humble yourself under the hand of the mighty God. If it is a shilling, God is faithful. He looks at your sacrifice. If it's a million, God is faithful. He looks at your sacrifice. We are not measured by the amount. We are measured by our sacrifice. So let your giving come from the heart. Nobody must force you. And for those of you who don't want to give, don't give. Please don't give. If your heart is not in it, please do not give. I give you permission to not give if your heart is not in it. The devil shows up in all types of forms. 
I need to do a midweek Bible study and I will go down in depth to show you how the devil is working right now in society. He's working. People don't know how to discern him. I was supposed to finish all seven. Look, it's 8.30. Y'all got me going. <laughs> so I described the times to you. See the times? You see how the times are? Don't go out there and you're just walking like a Christian without knowledge. You see, you see how the Bible said the times are? Devil take the highmost. This is how the times are. You can't be a believer walking there without the word. You got to be sharp. Amen. Come on, somebody. Now, number four. There's an enemy that raises its head because of your favor. The favor of God on your life will not be celebrated by all who sees it. Mm. The favor of God on your life will not be celebrated by all who see it. Genesis 37, Joseph had the favor of God upon his life. His brothers didn't even like the favor of his father upon his life. He had the coat of many colors. They didn't even like his favor from his own father, much less the favor from the heavenly father. They didn't like it. So they sought to kill him. They threw him in a pit. But the favor of God is not fair. The favor of God is not fair. People don't know why God is favoring you. They didn't put the favor on you and they can't take it away. Put that in your notes. They didn't put the favor on you and they cannot take it away. I'm telling you this morning. If they don't like it, there's nothing they can do about the favor of God upon your life. God will favor who he favors. When a man's ways pleases the Lord. Ah, even his enemies will have to be at peace with him. That's the power of God. Ain't nobody could turn that off. That's just how it is. But I can tell you this. The favor of God. Causes a, an enemy to surface. Do you remember Genesis 26? Isaac dug a well. They say, well, that well is ours. No, it isn't. If the well was sitting there dry all the time, all of a sudden I put some work into the well. Now water has returned like in the days of my father. All of a sudden, because you all see the water, all of a sudden now you want to clean the well. But it's okay. You can move me from the land, but you can't move my favor. Mm, that's a word. That's a word. So they named that place Essek because they, they, they confronted him. And, and he gone and he dug another well. And when he dug another well, all the time the well was dried up. Come on, somebody. The well was dried up. No water. And as soon as they started to see water, they say, that's our well too. All right, well, go ahead and take your well. You don't realize it's not the well. It's the favor. Anywhere I go, if I put my hands on a dry well, water is going to come out of it. It's not me. It's the hand that is on me. It is the hand of God. It is the hand of favor. You could move me seven times. Anywhere you move me, the water is going to come from the earth because it's the favor of God upon my life. Come on, somebody. They can mess with the well but they can't mess with your favor. They can move you a hundred times. It's the hand of God on your life that's causing your success. And you better don't forget it. It's not your ability to dig wells. Oh, that's a word. The Lord just told me that. The water did not come because you knew how to dig wells. Mm. They also knew how to dig wells, but the water didn't come for them. The water came for you because the hand of God is upon you. Not your engineering skills. It's not your knowledge of where to dig a well. It was the hand of God upon you. 
The last place they moved them was a place that the Lord says, name it Rehoboth. Rehoboth. For the Lord has given you room to be fruitful and to multiply. Then there are those, there's a, there's a face of the enemy that shows up when you share your vision. But your vision must be shared. You cannot not share your vision because of the enemy. But I do want you to know this. Once, you, once your vision goes public, it will also attract an enemy. And I'm just telling you, once you say you're going to build, once you say you're going to buy, once you say you're going to expand, once you say you're going to develop, once you say that, just know this, it triggers an enemy. Not just your favor, but your vision. All right. Some of you say, well, Luke, I don't believe. Nehemiah comes in quietly. He don't, look, it actually shows that he took all the measures to be. I'm going to tell everybody this thing. God put some in my heart. I ain't going to tell everybody. Just me and a few men, right? Just a few of us. Let's just walk these walls and see what's okay. It's burnt down there. The gates are, are destroyed. Okay, the walls are burnt. Okay. Uh, mm. He said, I ain't going to tell anybody. I ain't going to tell those who are going to do the work, neither the priests, neither the, the elders. I ain't going to. Don't tell anybody. Let's, let's, let's take this thing in and pray about what God is going to have us to do. God put it in his heart, right? The, the moment, the moment Nehemiah said, well, guys, listen, these walls have been burnt down for a long time. You guys have been living in these burnt down walls. And I have been empowered by the king with materials to be able to rebuild these walls for you. I don't want you to be a reproach anymore. I don't want you to live in poor conditions. I am here to improve your state. And the people said, yes, we want to build the walls. At the same time, Sanballat and Tobias. Immediately. I'm just trying to tell you. As soon as the vision was shared. Who is this? guy who come in here with no permission from our king to improve the conditions. First of all, if that is that plan approved? Has that plan been approved by the authorities? I'm sure even if a fox walk up on that wall, it's going to tumble down. First of all, they don't have enough materials. And second of all, they're probably too weak. Third of all, we can attack them in the night. Sambalat and Tobias start, they start planning. Why? The vision was shared. Well, let me say this to you. You have to share your vision. But I do want you to know when the vision is shared, you must have a strategy to build and to defend. Never go into a project with only offensive plans also have defensive plans. Build and defend. Build and defend. Progress and pray. That's good for you. Put that down in your notes. Progress and pray. Cover, Lord. Protect what we are progressing in. I don't want to progress without protection. God, protect. Come on, somebody. You, you, you don't play around. You, you share this vision, but you've got to have a press strategy to back up and have protection over your progress. Don't progress without protection. I always remember my uncle on a Saturday. You know, we went to pick Pomerac. I'm trying to say it in a way that the, the Americans will understand it. It's Pomerac. Pom, I think, is French for apple, is it? Palm. So, somebody might be able to help me. Palm and palm is palm is something in some other language. I think it's apple, right? <laughs> and so, but in Trinidad we say pumarak. You go and get pumarak. Anyways, on a Saturday, 
my uncle saw this beautiful tomarack. And everybody knows the, the, when it's dark, right? The darker, the sweeter, right? The darker the pomerac, the sweeter the juice. But what he saw, somebody say French cashew. Thank you, that's pretty good. I was just informed there, right? So the back of that pomerac had a little hole and what we also call, what you may call a wasp and what we call a jack spiner was in that hole. It was in the hole. And he was kind of teasing me that he was getting, you know, all the nice ones. I was down on the ground and I was catching them to put in a bucket. But when he saw a nice big dark one, he was taking it and eating it and throwing down the seed for me. You know, like teasing me. And boy, this Saturday, he got that one. It was big and juicy. He didn't see there was a little hole in the back and a jack spiny was inside of there. And boy, he gave it the bite of his life. And in minutes, anybody knows about jack spaniel, they are loaded. As soon as... He couldn't go to church the next day. His lip touched his nose. He couldn't say anything. He couldn't even eat soup. His lip they touched his nose. He was ready to eat, but he was not ready to defend. I'm trying to tell you, that's how the enemy works. He's going to go a place you are accustomed going and you never had to defend yourself. He's going to get himself tied up inside of there so that you could go ahead and plan your progress without protection and without prayer. He said, I'm going to catch it. Go ahead. You always do that. You always know how to build. Without prayer, go ahead and keep building. I'm going to get involved in the middle of the building. Catch you off guard. All right? They get threatened by your vision. Do you know why? Because if you go ahead and finish this vision, it will give glory to God. The Bible says, let man see your good works that they may glorify your father in heaven. The devil does not want more glory to go to our father in heaven. So he fights against us fulfilling our vision because the fulfillment of the vision will bring honor and glory to God and he doesn't want that. So you have to understand the context of why he will fight against the vision. But let me just finish with this one. There's an enemy that rears its head because of your possessions and your wealth increasing. Some of you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you this right now. That is why when you are increasing, you must grow humbly. Write that in your notes. You must grow humbly. Do not show and tell everything. Some of you right now was like the parrot that I no longer have at my house. That parrot, I always warn that parrot. Parrot, you talk too much. Everything you're talking about in the yard. The bird pass you talk. The dog bark you talk. A plum fall you talk. You see me. You talk. You see yourself. You talk. I tell that parrot, just rest. You talk too much. Some of you believers have parrot syndrome. Just grow humbly. Ain't nobody have to know everything about everything because I'm telling you, not everybody is fired up and excited about your increase. As soon as Isaac increased, the Bible said they gnashed with their teeth. Gnashed with their teeth. You go ahead and buy a new car. You came to church. You say, Pastor, I want you to bless that car for me. Pastor is blessing the car for you. Somebody's watching across and, and trying to figure out. You know, people are trying to figure out why you should have gotten your blessing. Some people want to disqualify the fact that you got blessed. It's like they do it. 
They can't find it in their heart to just celebrate. Mm. Because they, they so badly want it to happen for them, but it hasn't happened yet, that they can't celebrate your success because they're comparing. So knowing that, when you are increasing, increase humbly. Because sometimes you're giving the enemy information. Look up at every time. When they heard, Nehemiah, when they heard, when they heard, when the information got shared, they grabbed the information and they start working on strategy. When they heard, when they heard. One time a man met me in New York. He doesn't, he just met me in a business environment, so he doesn't know um, that my father is my father. He doesn't know the relation. So what churches go to in San Fernando? In Trinidad, I say in San Fernando, I go to a church called San Fernando Open Bible. I like to sometimes speak like that just to hear what people would say. <laughs> the guy said, who coming up? I said, yeah, yeah, Pastor Komina is my senior pastor. He said, Komina now? He said, yeah, just Komina just buying up real estate in San Fernando. Them fellas are really concerned about the work of God and, and people getting saved. And so them fellas are really buying up one set of real estate in San Fernando. <laughs> I say, well, okay. Sometimes you just have to give them rope, you know. Let them expose themselves. Wolf in sheep clothing. They're close. But they're not really celebrating your success. I know people will sit down right in the church and fight against the increase of the same church they're intending. <laughs> it amazes me. It amazes me. If the tree is laden, somebody's going to pelt big stone at that tree. Sometimes it's very hard to, to hide all your harvest. So just know, just, just know that Luke is telling you this morning that your increase in possessions and wealth will be another reason that the enemy shows its ugly head. Study the book. Study Isaac. As you wax rich, then they gnashed. As a matter of fact, some people will be more happy if you stay broke and poor. They wouldn't bother with you. They, it's almost like, you know, they're not, they don't want you to suffer, but they don't necessarily want you to do better than them. It's not that they're evil, you know. It's just that if you do better than them, it's going to highlight that they are not progressing and increasing in their own life. So if you stay at their own level, they, they're comfortable with that. But if you start to increase in a way that they, they don't understand and it starts to make them look bad and they start to compare in their own minds, they cannot celebrate you. They just tolerate you. Know that. Never stay where you cannot be celebrated. It's the only way, they're only tolerating it. You and trust me, let me tell you something. You don't need a lot, a lot, a lot of friends. Eh? Some of you have too much friends. You need a very tight, <laughs> you see Jesus? I like him too bad. He said, you know what happened? I see all these multitudes. I'm going to hold down a tight 12 and one I already worried about. Two, he's a little fire, fire starter. But I'm as powerful as I am, I don't need a very big circle. As a matter of fact, this 12 could cut down to three. Mm. Jesus, huh? as powerful as he is, he deserved anybody around me. He didn't carry no big crew, you know. Good 12. 
and he knew when to break it down to three. And he fulfilled the greatest mission ever. So I'm just sharing with you, quick review, and let me close this thing off. All right, quick review. Let me close this thing up. The enemy will show up. He has about seven faces. One, the devil himself. You got to resist the devil and he will flee. Jesus faced it. You'll face it as a believer. The dragon goes out against those who obey the commandments of the Lord. Fear. Threatened by your growth and progress. Enemy shows up his face. Threatened by your favor. Enemy shows up his face. Threatened by your vision. Enemy shows his face. Threatened by the increase of your possessions. I'm talking about tangible stuff and your wealth. I have two more for you. Learn the law, live the law, and lead the law. God bless you. Father, this morning I thank you for your word. I pray for your people. Let the engrafted word of God save our souls, our mind, our will, our intellect, our emotions. Bless every home, those who are connecting to me. Oh God, Father, via the internet, wherever they are in the world, I pray by G in Jesus' name that you touch them. I pray a special prayer for our intercessors who pray for everyone right now. I pray that you will strengthen them, touch them from the corner of their head to the sole of their feet. Bless them indeed. Protect them with your precious blood. May they see on the walls and may they inform the shepherds right now. May their discernment be sharp. May their health be protected. In Jesus' name, I bless every family, bless every business, oh God. I pray for multiplication, increase, and prosperity. I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your provision. I thank you for your protection. I thank you, O God, for increase on every side. Lord, let there be, O God, a wall of protection through the blood of the Lamb around our physical beings, around our family, around our possessions. Your word says, O God, when I see the blood, I will pass over thee. Thank you, O God, for your goodness and your mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being on here with me this morning. Took the form of it.